Okay, so thank you um, for joining me today. Um, so what I'm presenting on today is designing an engaging technology enhanced learning environment. Um, so when we think of um, learning environments, you know, we've traditionally had um, what we've been using in um, our learning management system is somewhere where we can store information. It's a repository of information. So you have um, folders. So you may have a folder for lectures, a folder for tutorials, a folder for assessments, folder for other resources. And what this is typically meant for students is that um, they've had to navigate through these folders to find the information that they need um, in order to um, complete what is required for the week. Um, and this has also meant that they're clicking through these various folders and trying to find this information. So they're navigating this journey in finding information and then getting on with the learning. Um, so what I've done is, you know, from my experience of teaching online and from what I've read about online teaching as well, um, I've come up with a framework that takes into account how learners learn and also um, how to improve engagement in that online space. So some of the lessons that I've learned is to minimize that click. So um, don't have all of those um, different folders, you know, where they have to navigate through. They click on one to get to another, to another. Normally we've had folders within folders within folders. So you've got, you know, subfolders that they have to navigate through to um, find that information. So that lent itself to uh, um, re-envisioning how we present that information. And one of the key things that I um, forms the basis of this framework is the week by week approach. So embedding all of the resources, activities, assessments that students need in that particular week. And also um, having what I found from my experience is students respond to visual elements. So making it visual, making it look good and appealing will also help to engage students. The other thing is to have a consistent format across those weeks that we have. So we have, you know, 12 weeks in a teaching period. Um, and we, you know, what I recommend is having a consistent format across those 12 weeks, which ensures that students are able to easily find where the information is um, throughout each of those weeks. So there's some consistency in where they go to to find that information. And online as well, you're moving away from that traditional um, didactic, you know, in front of the classroom um, where the facilitator or the your lecturer, teacher, sage, whatever you want to call it, um, but you're moving into this facilitation role online. So you're helping um, students navigate their way through the online course, but also navigate their way through and make sense of the information that's presented to them as well. And underlying the framework that I'm going to present is three pedagogical principles. Um, then they focus around scaffolding of learning. So building on what the learner already knows and each week taking them to the next level of knowledge. Um, and then also focusing on constructive alignment. So it's ensuring that each of those elements that you have within the course, within each week, is aligned. So what is the learning goal for the week? How does that, um, re how do the resources that you have, whether it's readings or recorded resources, align with those learning um, goals? How do the activities and assessments align as well? And then, then how do they align back to that overall um, learning outcomes of the course? And also the final pedagogical principle that I've um, used in this framework is constructivism. So learning is that social collaborative process and through that engagement with the facilitator and the learner um, that there is that sense making activity that comes um, out of that engagement and out of the engagement with the resources um, in that course as well. Now those were my um, learning um, 
the pedagogical theories that I had at the back of my mind. You may have um, different pedagogical um, frameworks that you use in your practice. Um, if you haven't really thought about pedagogical theories and frameworks to pin your practice, there's this wonderful resource that I always recommend. Um, it's up there on the slides. Um, if you can have a look at that. It presents it um, very visually in a timeline of when these um, frameworks were developed. So that is quite a useful resource. So that was my th um, thinking behind re-envisioning how I teach online. Um, then from that thinking came about a framework for action. And this framework um, is based on those um, three pedagogical principles, but it, um, three pedagogical principles, but it also has a number of um, principles that you um, you use in your practice online so um, or you use to guide your practice online um, so the first one is people learn to learn as they learn so it's taking into account all of those um, personal learning um, styles so looking at Vox but looking at also the cultural um, social context of learning as well and that's similar with um, learning is personal um, and contextualizing learning to the not only the socio-economic cultural backgrounds of learners but also um, the context in which they will work um, as well which is important the other um, principles that I have is that learning is a social activity and that's again with that constructivism pedagogy um, and that translates into um, the activities and resources that I have for the students. Um, learning is an active process, so I try to have as many um, uh, engaging and active or authentic um, activities as possible that relate to the context that they'll work in, but also, also relate to the wider um, social cultural context as well. And the teacher's role is a facilitator or an interactive guide and that motivation is key to learning so from these from this framework and this is a framework for action i thought about okay this is a framework you know doesn't particularly translate it into practice so how do i then then translate this into a framework or into a design for an online learning environment which would be engaging. So came up with a, temp, um, a template to action this framework. And I'll go through this template in more detail throughout this presentation. So basically it starts off with a title um, and a banner. And this template is also, um, if I go on to the details of it, is quite useful when you're actually in those planning stages for um, transitioning a course into the online environment. So it also gets you to think about, okay, you've got a course you've got all of these resources how do I now put them together in a way that will be engaging online so I'll go through those details as well so the first thing that I have is a banner and a banner keeps the week fresh you can have a different banner for the week and it just signals or starts that in process of engaging with the students it's visually I keep it visual and keep it visually appealing it's very short um, so and I signal to the learners in this banner some key dates for that session. So as you'll see, there's a word cloud that I've used, um, welcome to week one, and it has the key um, dates when week one starts and finishes, and it has um, a very brief um, instruction to the student on what to do next. And the next thing that they do is engage with a recorded resource introducing them to the week. Um, and there's a number of ways that I have um, created these um, banners so you can use um, a number of different tools. I, I like word clouds um, for my banners. It's something different to the other things that I put into place, but you can use any image or designing um, software. You can use um, Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, I know AUT has a subscription to it, so if you're familiar with that, you can use that. You can use Prezi, um, you can use Canva, which is quite popular um, with a lot of people, but really you can even do this on Microsoft Word or PowerPoint if you want to as well. So it doesn't have to be all fancy, it can be um, very simple software. 
and by no means you know am I advocating for any of these software it's just some options that I'm presenting as part of this um, presentation and what I would like to mention is the tools um, shouldn't guide how you design your page it's the pedagogy that um, guides the design of your online um, course and then the tools come in um, later you know so you can have any tool that you're familiar with to do these things and then what I do is next I have an introduction to the week and that establishes those relationship it begins to establish relationships with the learners but it also puts a face and a voice to that week so I either do this in terms of having a um, video recording of myself just introducing the week it's a very short you know two minute recording introducing the week signaling to the learner any key um, things um, that are due in the week but also noting you know some key concepts that they should be um, grasping by the end of this session so there's a couple of ways I do this either through a video recording of myself or a voice over presentation so I'll play a little snippet from both of these. So the first one is just a recording Kia ora. Kia ora. Welcome, Welcome to the, to the first, first week of Heal 704, quality, quality management in the health sector. sector. You may, may have purchased a product, product or service, or service or thought, oh, this is, this is quality. quality. To an to ordinary, ordinary person, person, quality is, quality is how, how good so. comes. So that's one of the ways I do it. You know, it's um, fronting up in, you know, in front of a camera and recording myself. The other word is I'm Joel I'm Joel Mahal, Mahal, and welcome to session one, one, basics, one, basics of quality, quality management. management. The aim, the aim of, this of this session is, is for, you for you to develop, develop an understanding of what, of what is, is meant by quality, quality and examine attributes, and attributes of, quality of quality in relation to the New Zealand, Zealand health sector. sector. So in terms of, you know, there's a couple of differences and where I use um, either a voiceover presentation or a video recording of myself. When there's a little bit more happening in the week, I like to use a voiceover presentation because I can kind of um, highlight some of those things that the students need to um, grasp in that week or need to do. So I alternate between having a um, recording of myself and a voiceover presentation. And it's just, again, it is primarily to establish that connection with the students, um, say, hey, I'm here, I've got an online presence, um, you know, you should have one too. If you need any help, you know, as the facilitator for this course, I'm here to guide you. Um, and it makes you more approachable if you are um, there in some way or the other, either if it's, you know, a recording of yourself or even your voice. And again, there's many ways to do this. The um, Microsoft PowerPoint works very well. Um, if you want to get, you know, a little bit more um, elaborate with your design, a little bit more fancy with your design, you could try um, Prezi. Um, AET also has a subscription to H5P, and that is quite good as well. So um, you can try that as well. And you can also do these on Panopto and really any other um, recording software. And then right after the introduction, what I do is I highlight or signal to the students these are the learning goals for this session. So I normally do this visually and I present this as a diagram to the students. So I say this is the learning goal. This at by the end of this session, you should have understood this. And this is how this session relates to the overall learning outcomes of this course. So it does a couple of things. It's um, again, it embeds that constructive alignment, not only for um, the learner, but for you as a facilitator or a lecturer in this course. Um, it gets you to think about, okay, these are the learning goals. These are the um, ways that it contributes to the overall learning outcomes. So what resources, you know, really make this work or um, drive home these learnings for the students? Um, Again, it also allows you to scaffold um, students kind of um, students as well kind of see, you know, when you connect it to the broader learning outcomes, they're able to also use this as um, revision. So if you, they're doing an assessment, they know exactly where, um, you know, they get resources for learning outcome one. But it also allows you to scaffold and build on those learning outcomes through these weeks as well. Um, so other than signposting, it is that scaffolding as well that you can embed. 
Um, again, any image um, uh, construction software will allow you to do that. So, you know, um, AET, we've got Adobe. If you're familiar with uh, Adobe, you could use that. Um, we've got H5, a subscription to H5P. Um, but, you know, Prezi, Canva also work well. Microsoft PowerPoint will also do the trick. So whatever you're familiar with, go with what you're familiar with. Um, don't go with it because it's fancy sometimes, you know, it's harder to use as well. So whatever is um, something that you're familiar with and that you know how to use would be the best software for you. Then, you know, following, you know, once I've signed posted um, to the students that these are the learning goals and these are how it, this session or this week contributes to the overall learning outcomes, then I have those resources that the students start to engage with. The first resource that I have is a reading. Now you can change the order of this based on your course and um, what would work well. I get the students to read um, first, you know, so I pick a reading, a short reading, you know, it could be a journal article, it could be um, something, you know, from a uh, from the media or etc something you know that draws out those key concepts that I want um, the students to engage with and then I back that up through a recorded resource so once they've read and they have some understanding of what this week is about and what those concepts are about then I drive home that message through that recorded resource it is a short recorded resource keep it under 15 minutes just because you know um, of the attention span of students but also what they can take on you can be surprised of how much you can cover within those 15 minutes um, I generally as a rule of thumb I try and keep it 10 minutes or less I find that works better than somewhere something 15 minutes but sometimes you know there are some um, weeks where I have gone over 10 minutes for sure um, and then I understand that all learners learn differently so um, not every learner you know is able to engage with those readings you know because it is one um, reading um, and or engage with the recorded resource and be able to pick up on those concepts so some pe some learners may require further resources to be able to pick up on what you're trying to um, um, get them to understand for that week so I have a section you know sometimes that I use and it's not in all of those um, weeks but it's supplementary resources and it's you know other optional readings if they haven't understood or l links to videos um, websites um, etc Jean you have a question yeah uh, thanks Jalal um, I just wanted to um, just some clarification in regards to your recorded resource that you're talking about is that something that you've created kind of like where you're unpacking those ideas versus a YouTube clip or something yes. I just wanted to clarify yes so thank you yeah. yes that's a good clarification um yes so it's a it's something that I've recorded and I generally I'll show you an example of it I generally do this either through you know a voiceover presentation or an animated video and um, then in supplementary resources is where I use those links so sometimes there's a YouTube video video that helps or a TEDx talk or you know something from Khan Academy or where or Coursera that might help students you know as long as it's short you know it's very clear and to the point um, that I will put that in the supplementary resources so recorded resources um, these are resources that I've created um, and I, I alternate between either having a voice over presentation or an animation video. I'll show you an example of an animation video. A number, a number of, of attributes, attributes characterize, characterize quality, quality of, of healthcare, healthcare services. services. These, These are, are access, access to services, technical, technical competence, equity, equity effectiveness, effectiveness, efficiency, continuity of care, safety, safety patient. So, yep, that is an example of a um, doodly video that I've created. Um, I don't do this for each session, but I do these, you know, um, I alternate between this and um, my voiceover presentations. Doodly, I, the feedback that I've got from students for creating an animated video is they enjoy it. They find them interesting to watch and listen to. There's lots of things happening on the screen and moving things. Um, so they're not too hard to do. 
they are time consuming to do. One of these would take me about three days to do. This is about eight to 10 minutes long. It's not very long, but it is about kind of scripting it, um, recording it, then creating all of these elements. So it's not like you plug it in somewhere and it all it just generates. You have to manually create all of these elements that you see on the screen. Um, there are templates that you can drag and drop. Um, so, you know, that whole, um, frame of that diagram is there but you know you do have to go in and um, put in all of those words and um, sync up your voice to the um, slides as well so it is a fair bit of work but once you've done these I do these in a way that I would not have to redesign this so this is a um, technical concept so that's what I focus on in this so this could be used this is not going to change um, significantly if I do need to modify it that's not too hard to do as well so where I draw in those um, examples the context um, those things that could change is through that engagement session and there's a um, summary session that I will also um, talk to you about so there's a number of ways you could do these again you know um, PowerPoint is great, Panopto um, is something that we have at AUT as well, H5P you can do um, um, recorded resources with quizzes embedded so that's quite good as well so if you do want to do things that are more interactive and students can watch um, and answer questions along the way so you can break it up you know H5P is a great software to do that um, but there's also things like Mentimeter um, that you can be using. So again, it's not the software that's driving the design, it is the pedagogy that's driving the design and the software is I'm just presenting some options. Um, there are a number of options, number of software that you could use. And then after this I have an engagement session. So the engagement session is um, where I interact with the students. So I normally set this up through Zoom, you could use Teams, whatever. I use Zooms because it has the option of breakout rooms and this particular course has um, group work that goes along um, each week right until the end of the course so that breakout rooms is quite useful as well for me. Um, but this is a session for me to again um, go back to some of the things that the students have read. Again signpost for the students those key con um, concepts um, have those discussions around the wider context, you know, the um, where industries that they'd be working in, the socio-economic cultural context of what they've read, you know, in terms of quality, um, and have those broader discussions. Um, not only, um, you know, do they have that opportunity to discuss with me, but they have that opportunity within these sessions to discuss with each other. So these um, facilitator to the learner um, engagement, but also peer to peer engagement as well. Um, and part of my um, engagement sessions is also a authentic assessment that I've got go running across this course. So they have group work as well, where they break out into teams and have those discussions. And again, you can use um, you know a number of software um, to create those um, diagrams um, to make it look more visual so that um, what I've done with that um, diagram indicating when the zoom meeting is um, I've just used um, Prezi to create that but you can use any number of software and then once they've had that engagement um, session with them I always have a short activity a formative activity each um, week so it could be as simple as uh, as a worksheet that they do so there's two types of activities that I use um, a self-review activity or a peer engagement activity and this also gets the students to engage with the resources because then they complete this activity so it could be something as simple as a worksheet or a crossword that you can design online crosswords and online activities are quite fun you can also do online games and quizzes um, and quizzes are embedded within the learning management system and there's a number of software that you can use to gamify learning such as Kahoot and then you can have um, little games along the way 
um, throughout the course. But I also have um, discussion boards, not as much in um, Blackboard, um, but when we transition on to our Canvas software, I think that would be great to have discussion boards. Blackboard doesn't handle discussions um, forums really well. Um, and I know Canva and other learning management systems, uh, sorry, Canvas and other learning management systems do handle it quite well. And I think that would be quite useful as well. And there's a number of ways to also handle discussion boards. Sometimes, you know, in previous universities, I've incorporated these discussions into summative assessments. So they may do a discussion a week. And at the end of it, you know, a short discussion, it's very guided, you know, 200 words, um, and you you know that I have guidelines around it that you must contribute um, a post and then go in and reply to other people's posts at least one or two other replies and then at the end of the course you know pick your three best discussion posts that you've had or engagements and then submit that for assessment so there's a number of ways that this could then transition from a formative to a summative activity as well so um, there's a you know if you want to have um, any of those discussions with me later around those guidelines i'll be happy to but i know lynn is doing planning something for next year around this space so it'd be good to hear from her um, when she's done it yeah yeah what we've done is put a discussion board around each learning outcome so each learning outcome's got a question related to it which each discussion group has got to discuss and that will contribute to their grade for that learning outcome. So there's five learning outcomes, five discussions that they have to be involved with and um, they're marked as a team on that. Oh, wonderful. Lynn, we we'll look forward to hearing um, how that goes next year. Maybe you could present on one of the sessions after you've done it. Um, <laughs> That would be great because I think when we transition onto Canvas, it's going to open up a lot more options. And I, f I do find discussion boards are quite engaging. So it'd be good to hear your experiences at some point. And also on the activity, I really I adopted your acti a lot of your activities when I took over your papers. But what we're looking at with Canvas is that the students will participate in the activity and they must do that to move on to the next module and um, so that the student has had to have you know, looked at what they've learned at least and um, participated in the activity before they can move on. Wonderful. Sounds good Lynn. Yeah look forward to hearing more about it. Um, Thanks. So with the activities um, I just keep it quite simple, you know, um, I've just got an image around this is a worksheet. It's on the very first week of the um, of this particular course. So it's a very simple activity um, and there's a document attached to it. And then there's just the question, you know, and I just keep it kind of um, visual again throughout my course, um, ensuring that students are, um, you know, that learners respond to those visual elements better and again you can create a number of, there's a number of software around activities um, so you know those images you know Prezi and Canva, Canva are quite good but there's a number of crossword um, generating um, tools as well so if you want to um, have a go at you know creating some crosswords for students and they complete that um, there's word searches, there's quizzes within the LMS, so Blackboard has that internal quiz feature and I know Canvas does as well, but you can also do quizzes and gamification of learning through Kahoot. Um, and then also there is, you know, if you want to have activities or engagement around um, concept mapping, um, posters, diagrams online, there's a number of them. I know Loix has um, been using Mural. Um, there's also Allboard, which is quite good, and Lucid Spark, which also has mind mapping plus post it notes as well. So um, there's a number of tools, you know, whatever um, floats your boat, I guess, you know, whatever is easier for you, um, just go with it. 
And then, as I said, in you know that template has a section for team task as well. Um, you may not have a team um, task or a group project, um, so you can totally ignore that part of that template. I had one, and I just um, embedded that within my course. This is an authentic assessment that they do. So it is really this is a blended course. So they have. Um, all of the sessions online except those authentic um, assessment sessions um, there's about three of them that they do at um, AIH clinic in Akaranga um, but the other elements of that group project the team task is done is also done online through the in those engagement sessions so they break out into their breakout rooms and um, have discussions around um, activities and tasks that they are completing each week in relation to that project and again, those images you can create um, using those um, Canva, Prezi or any other similar software. At the end of the week, what I find is um, a good way to round things up is to have a recap resource. Um, and this is where I bring together um, everything that the students has, has engaged in, you know, through those recorded resources and those readings, through the engagement and the discussions that we've had. So I kind of weave in those discussions and draw the students back to the main learnings from the week and draw in any um, key concepts and examples, etc. in this session. So here, it, this is just a um, voiceover presentation. It is roughly around five minutes. Um, and um, what I do in this session is just to bring it all back together. Kia ora. Kia ora. Before, Before you move, you move on, on to the, the next session, session let's, let's recap, recap on the on basic, basic concept of, of healthcare quality. quality. Right, so it's just um, a recorded um, resource for the students just to go back and just to kind of recap on what they've learned. Um, what we've discussed um, and it also si signals to the student you know oh, I didn't really get that concept I don't know um, I didn't actually um, do any reading about that particular concept or you know uh, and it signals for them to go back and have a look at those resources again if they've missed out on anything the first the concept, concept that you, that you need, to, need understand to understand is Right, again, so that is just a PowerPoint presentation that I've done a voice over um, recording to, but you can use really any software. You can get creative and use a um, animation software to do this as well. Um, but it, as I said, it is time consuming and I change this is so generally the recorded resources, um, all of those recordings stay the same across semesters when I teach it because they're really on those key concepts um, that are not likely to change but the re recap resource is something that I record every semester when I run it because those discussions that I have with the stu um, students are different each um, semester so this is something that I would record um, at the end of the week and post it up and just bring together um, everything that we've done in that week And then I have a review and checklist. Um, again, this is visual. It is a diagram and it just says, you know, before you move on to um, session two or week two, ensure that you have viewed the, re uh, viewed the recorded resources, engage with the readings, um, completed the learning activity, etc. Ideally, I would have loved to have done this as some sort of actual checklist where they can tick things off. Blackboard doesn't allow that, but I understand Canvas does. So Canvas will say, you know, um, a percentage completed of that week. So you're able to um, check things as complete. And then um, it will say, you know, you, oh, you've, got, you've completed 90% of this week or you've completed 100% of it. So those features will open up when we transition into a new learning management system. And I will redesign this for um, the new learning management system as an actual checklist with a, a progress bar. Right, so there's an example of a um, course. So if you do want access to my course, um, just send me an email and I'll um, give you access and you can um, have a look through and see all of these things in action. Um, so I'm happy to do that. Just send me an email.
So that's the framework um, for action and the template for translating that framework into an engaging online um, learning environment. But on its own, it is just an online learning environment. But to make it engaging, you have some of those elements, but it is really about bringing it back to those that human touch. It's about um, thinking about some of those other things behind the design and some of these things are around ensuring that the workload is realistic. If it's not realistic, students um, will be disengaged, will not be motivated to progress through the course. Um, they'll start switching off and that's when you have those attrition rates increasing in courses. Ensure that there is intrinsic motivation. So ensure that there are real world tasks, that there is a authentic assessment opportunities. Um, Pace that learning. So again, it's coming back to that scaffolding of learning. Pace it throughout the course. So build on it from each week um, and each resource to the next as well. Ensure that you give timely feedback. Um, ensure that you um, feedback is um, available and in a way that is understandable by the re, um, by the learner. Don't pack in too many things in the feedback. Um, a lot of studies show that have you know three key points that you want to convey um, in your feedback to the learner. If you have a long list of it, it is quite disengaging um, for the learner. So ensure that you have um, you know a couple of good things that you want to um, put across in that feedback. You can do feedback in a number of ways. Um, I normally write it out. You know I do the traditional um, written feedback to the um, students, but you can also do video recordings and voice um, recordings in your feedback as well. Have good clear guidelines throughout your course around all of those activities that I've mentioned. So ensure that students aren't confused at any point, which is also disengaging and ensure that there's constructive alignment throughout the course. And, you know, it's important as the facilitator that you create an online presence. If you're present and you're visible in that online environment, then the students will be motivated and engaged as well. But if you're not there and they don't see that you have an um, online presence, then they'll um, start to get disengaged from that course as well. So some of the ways that I um, ensure that I have an online presence is have weekly announcements. You can do this in a number of ways. I have announcements that either I write out and have lots of Im images in it, or I record some of these announcements, you know, just um, highlighting um, what this week is about, when it starts and finishes, and what are some of the important aspects of this week and any particular tasks or activities or assessments that are due in that week. I have um, a number of formative activities that the students engage with and that um, they're able to receive that feedback on and develop their learning and understanding of those learning outcomes as they progress through the course. Ensure that there is timely feedback um, because if um, feedback is late or um, it doesn't happen within a um, period that they are, you know, in a sh um, if it's not turned around um, in an effective period, short effective period, then students aren't able to use that uh, feedback in the next task that they do. So it should allow them to um, improve on their learnings and completion of the next tasks. Ensure that there's also good communication guidelines throughout the course, um, that whatever um, you're communicating is clear as well. When you're thinking about the design of your online learning environment, also think about accessibility. So ensuring that there is a consistent format, so each week has a consistent structure, um, will improve on learner accessibility. Yeah, there would be a num. You'll have um, people who well learners who learn differently. You know, some learners will respond visually, some, you know, by doing things. But there's also um, learners with certain learning disabilities that you need to account for in the design of your online course. So using pictures and diagrams um, um, addresses some of those um, various learning styles that we have. If you are using pictures and diagrams, I would recommend using um, 
providing a description in the alt text and we sometimes just overlook this but the alt text alt text is quite important for those with um, visual imper impairments and they have if they have any um, software that reads out um, what is on the screen when you have alt text it will read it out um, for them through the software that they have um, videos off also offer flexibility and you know the feedback that i've had with students is you know um, i prefer a video over a live lecture because hey, i'm able to stop and watch and you know in my own time um, and students who have english as an additional language have um, recorded you know that they can st stop rewind and re-listen if they haven't understood so um, those are some of the advantages of um, videos in consider multiple formats throughout your course to keep it engaging but to keep it also um, to address those issues with different learn um, learners with different learning styles and consider access throughout the course um, don't have it as a afterthought have it as part of your um, just normal thinking that there is you know every learner is different and that i should in my um, design of an online environment accommodate for all of those different learning styles and impairments and some more tools to engage learners you know you could use polls um, zoom has built in polls if you're using zoom as an engagement session but you can use a number of um, different um, software one of them is polls everywhere where you can um, build in polls into your slides and presentations as well h5p also does that um, in times of um, COVID and we're not where students aren't able to go in field trips or visit places you can also use virtual tours so what I'm doing is creating a virtual tour of AIH clinic for my students to walk around and have a feel of the clinic um, when they're not able to go during lockdown so um, one of the ways you can do that is through a software called SeekBeak. Um, gamifying learning is also quite interesting and um, students respond well to it so you can um, have challenges or games throughout the semester where um, students compete with each other you know to see who's got the highest course at the end of the course um, you can have um, um, a number of different types of games as well so you can have quizzes ch um, different challenges in um, software such as Kahoot so that's quite um, engaging and fun as well um, again those um, whiteboards are quite useful for engagement and getting students to um, work with each other to further their understanding and it goes back to that cons um, constructivism um, um, philosophy that underpins this learning design and also consider embedding um, subtitles in your video so if you're doing recorded resources um, there are people who have impairments that may struggle with recorded resources as well so if you have subtitles that may make it easier as well and there's a lot of software that generates these um, um, very easily now and quite accurately otter ai is probably one of the better ones that i've found but you can also use zoom and record yourself on zoom and zoom does um, transcriptions and that you can then feed into um, some of these software and that will automatically generate um, and if you're thinking about using images and you're not sure about copyright i've included some um, links there some free links that have royalty free images and royalty free um, music that you can use unsplash is quite good and it has a lot of um, um, images that in in its um, data banks there the other thing that i like is filmstro which is quite good you know say if you wanted to say a particular sentence um, you can type it into fl um, film, filmstro and then what it will do is pick out scenes from different movies that people say those words and sentences and construct a sentence for you um, which is quite neat you know which kind of um, i think that appeals to learners as well when you can kind of um, embedded into um, media that they're familiar with as well um, and the other thing that I do throughout um, 
my courses, whether they're um, on campus or online, um, is get feedback from the learners because it helps to improve my practice, but it also helps to improve the courses I go along. I know the university does an end of course um, survey, but that is of no benefit to this particular um, cohort of students that you're teaching because you know you, you can't make any changes based on an end of course survey for them. So what I do is embed um, a few short um, online surveys that just help me to understand this particular cohort of learners and address their needs better. Um, so I keep it very simple, it can be answered within a you know, couple of minutes um, and it just gives me important feedback if I need to change anything to better address the learning needs of the students. Those resources that I talked to you about, you know, so if you have some YouTube resources that you want um, to use, um, you can, instead of um, writing out the links to these resources, you can use barcodes, you know, to um, direct the students to these resources and that's quite a fun way. So if you take out your phones and scan that barcode, it will take you to, you know, my professional um, social networks. So it'll just get, it's just for an example, um, what you can do using barcodes. So it'll just take you um, to a number of other links. So, you know, you'll see my YouTube and Twitter and all of that um, through that barcode. Um, so that's a fun way of kind of redirecting resources um, for students or redirecting students to um, different resources. So that was the end of my um, presentation. Um, I welcome any questions, feedback.